एवरीवन वेलकम टू बायोलॉजी विद एमजे दिस इज एमजे योर एंथुसियास्टिक गाइड सो वेदर यू आर अ नीट एस्पिरेंट और सिंपली अ बायोलॉजी लवर दिस वीडियो इज फिल्ड विद वैल्यूएबल इनसाइट्स एंड नॉलेज ओके सो स्टे ट्यून टिल द एंड ऑफ द वीडियो एंड इफ यू हैवेंट ऑलरेडी प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आईकॉन सो दैट यू नेवर मिस एन अपडेट रिमेंबर टू लाइक कॉमेंट एंड शेयर दिस वीडियो विद योर फ्रेंड्स Okay, so let's get to the video. Hello, everyone. Today we are going to study about kingdom fungi. Okay, this is our third kingdom. We have already covered kingdom Monera and kingdom Protista. Now, in this video, we are going to cover kingdom fungi from the chapter biological classification. So, let us begin the video. For the previous videos, you can check this playlist. All right. So, let us begin with kingdom fungi. So, kingdom fungi comprise of organisms which are known as fungi right fungi is the plural form fungus is the singular form okay so what are these organisms these organisms are thalloid organisms that means they are not differentiated into roots stems and leaves their body is thread like it comprises of thread like structures all right these structures are known as hyphae okay and these structures are not differentiated into structures like roots stems and leaves that we see in plants okay or in animals we have certain structures in the body uh, the body is differentiated into certain body parts but in fungi the structure is simple thread like okay there is no body differentiation into separate structures so kingdom fungi comprises of organisms which have heterotrophic mode of nutrition that is they obtain their food from other sources from other organisms they cannot synthesize their own food all right they show a great diversity in morphology and habitat okay they are found everywhere cosmopolitan in distribution they are what does cosmopolitan means cosmopolitan means that they are found everywhere they occur in air water soil on animals on on plants so, so whichever place you can think of fungi are found like everywhere so you can see this rotten piece of bread it it has certain green patches on it so these are the fungal fungal patches okay so ry rhizopus is growing on this bread so in this microscopic view you can see the, the rhizopus fungus growing on this bread okay so fungi is seen everywhere this this is a toadstool this is a non edible uh, mushroom so this is also a type of fungi so all of these fungi are also found uh, growing on various rotten fruits that you see okay if you leave a fruit for a certain period for a long time it will uh, start to get spoiled okay so why does it get spoiled because of fungal growth on it all right apart from this fungus is also known to cause diseases in plants and animals for example white spots on mustard leaves is caused by albugo albugo is the name of a parasitic fungus okay this is an important example do remember it so wheat rust this is a disease caused by paxenia okay paxenia is also a fungus that causes wheat rust as you can see in this image on the leaves of this plant that is the wheat plant certain structures are present these are the fungal growths okay these are caused by these structures that are growing are caused by these symptoms are caused by paxenia the fungus okay and white spots on mustard leaves by albugo fungi also have some beneficial uses also for example penicillium a fungus is a source of some is a source of antibiotic penicillin penicillin okay so so fungi also has some useful uses yeast a unicellular fungi okay as you can see these are this is yeast all these cells represent yeast cells it is responsible for the formation of bread and beer so in that industry it is widely used yeast scientific name is saccharomyces cerevisiae so it is widely used in the fermentation in the making of bread and beer so fungi is found everywhere has a variety of uses also and various side effects also as already mentioned so have you ever wondered why do we keep food in refrigerators 
the obvious answer that comes to the mind is because refrigerators provide cold environment to it but why do why does the cold environment uh, help us in preserving the food for a long period of time why does that environment not spoil the food because the answer is fungi prefers to grow in warm and humid places whereas in refrigerators the environment is the temperature is cold so the fungi growth is not possible in refrigerators okay Fung fungus becomes inactive okay even bacterial growth is not possible because they also become inactive they need fungi needs warm and humid places to grow so that is why we keep fruits in refrigerators to preserve them for a longer period of time so that they stay fresh okay now coming to the structure of fungus so as i already told fungi is made up of thread like structures so this is a mushroom okay if you will see it using a microscope if you will dissect it you will see that it is made of filamentous structures various filaments various thread like structures these structures are known as hyphae okay this structure this structure all of these threads are known as hyphae and the network of these threads that is the network of hyphae is known as mycelium okay so the thread is known as hyphae when multiple of these threads come together in tangle and create a network that network is called mycelium so mycelium is the bigger structure which is made up of smaller thread like structures known as hyphae okay now moving forward so fungi has this area that is present on the surface is the fruiting body okay and this is the mycelium okay so the fruiting body so the whole structure is made up of hyphae only but the in order to produce spores for reproduction the fungi produces a fruiting body which is responsible for the production of spores the fruiting body bears spores that is responsible for the process of reproduction so that is how the differentiation in fungus occurs this is the mycelium region which is helping it to attach to the substratum mycelium is also present here but it is organized into a fruiting body okay so this is the structure of a fungus now before moving forward do not forget to follow me on instagram facebook and telegram the links of all of these three platforms are provided in the description of this video okay so please do follow me on these platforms so that you never miss any update and also please subscribe to my youtube channel your support means the world to me okay so let's move forward uh the fungi if we talk about the types of fungi fungi are of two types they can be either unicellular they can be multicellular okay there is only one unicellular fungi which is yeast okay we, we saw in that previous picture that fungi is a uh, yeast is made up of single cells okay this is yeast are the only unicellular fungus to exist and then there are multicellular fungi majority or most of the fungi except yeast are multicellular even in multicellular fun fungi they are of two types they can be either septate or they can be aseptate okay what happens in septate fungi in septate fungi these structures or cross walls are present these are known as septa which divides the hypha into various sections okay these are the various septas so this is this kind of hypha is hypha is known as a septate hypha okay and on the other hand the other type of hypha is the aseptate hypha in which the hypha is not separated or divided into various sections by the cross walls that is the septa are absent here in cenocytic hypha hyphae the septa is absent that is why it is also known as aseptate hyphae or a cenocytic hyphae cenocytic because multiple nuclei are present okay it is a multi nucleate condition without the presence of cross walls so this is a cenocytic or aseptate hyphae and this is a septate hyphae okay and both of these are examples of multicellular fungus both of these exist in multicellular fungus in which more than one cell are present
So the example of the septate fungus is Aspergillus. Okay, one of the examples, and of a septate fungus is Rhizopus. Okay. So the cell wall of fungi, unlike plants, is made up of chitin. So plant cell wall is made up of cellulose, but the cell wall of fungi is made up of chitin and polysaccharides. Okay. The major component in the cell wall of fungi is chitin. Now, if we talk about the mode of nutrition in fungi, fungi as already told, as I already told you, they show heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Among heterotrophic mode of nutrition, also majority of them are saprophytic. That is, they depend on the dead and decaying organic matter to obtain their nutrition. They secrete enzymes, they decompose that matter and then break down those compounds in order to extract the nutrition from the dead and decaying organic matter. Okay, That matter could be uh, the dead remains of plants, it could be the dead remains of animals. All right. Then comes the parasitic mode of nutrition. Fungi also shows parasitic mode of nutrition. Okay, That is, they can live inside or on, uh, on the surface of other organisms or inside their bodies to obtain nutrition, to extract nutrition from the, those organisms. It could be plants also, it could be animals also. They also show symbiotic mode of nutrition. Symbiotic means in which both the parties are benefit. That is, the fungi is present in association with an organism. Let's call that organism X. Okay. So, such kinds of associations in which both the parties are benefited. Now, if both the parties are benefited, this type of relationship is known as mutualism. So, fungi is also benefit, the other organism is also benefit, benefited. So, this is an example of mutualism. What happens in parasitism? One organism is benefited and the other is harmed. So, in, in this case, if the fungi is acting as a parasite, so fungi is being benefited and the other organism, for example, X organism is getting harmed here. Okay. So, this is parasitism and this is mutualism. Now, in mutualism, Fungi have two kinds of associations, that is lichens and mycorrhiza. So, what happens in lichens? Lichens are associations of algae and fungi. Okay, they live in mutually beneficial associations. In mycorrhiza, mycorrhiza what happens is, what are mycorrhiza? In mycorrhiza, fungi are present in association with plant roots. Those structures are known as mycorrhiza and when fungi live in association with algae, those structures are known as lichens. So, these are the two kinds of symbiotic associations in which fungi exist uh, as symbiotic parties and show mutualism. So, in lichens, the algal component provides food for the fungal component and fungi, mycelia or hyphae, they provide shelter to the algae. So, in this way, both the parties are benefiting each other. In plant roots and in fungi, in mycorrhizal associations, the plant roots absorb water and minerals from the soil, okay, which are obtained by fungi. Okay, the nutrients are extracted by fungi. Fungi, on the other hand, they also provide nutrients to the soil, okay, nutrients to the plants when they are living in such associations with the mycorrhiza. Okay. Now moving forward. If we talk about reproduction in fungi, reproduction is of three type kinds, okay, vegetative also, asexual and sexual. These three kinds of reproduction are shown by fungi. In vegetative reproduction, fragmentation is seen, fission is seen and budding is seen, okay. Now, let us talk about vegetative reproduction. In fission, what happens is the parent cell divides into two daughter cells. This is the mechanism of fission. That was the number one, number second method here. Okay. Then the second method is via budding. What happens in budding? Budding happens in yeast. So this is the yeast cell, a small bud forms. This is the developing bud. Okay. Then the components of the cell split in two parts. Then buds are separated from the parent cell. In such way, multiple buds are formed, chain of buds are formed, okay, like this, a chain of buds can be formed. So, this method of reproduction is known as budding, 
then in fragmentation the hypha divides into various fragments okay and each of the fragment can grow into the mature individual so these are the various ways in which vegetative reproduction is happening okay that means no sexual re uh, structure or spores are being formed just from the parent body splitting or fragmentation is happening and the new organisms are being formed so this this was about vegetative reproduction in fungi if we talk about asexual reproduction in asexual reproduction various spores are involved it happens by spores sexual reproduction also happens by spores but there are differences obviously in sexual and asexual reproductions because in sexual reproduction two kinds of parents are there okay two types of parties are involved uh, one uh, one mating type and a second mating type but in asexual reproduction a single mating type or single parent is involved so the asexual spores are of three types conidiospores sporangiospores and zoospores let us study the asexual spores so in asexual spores Th these are the conidia or the conidiospores they are born exogenously okay these are born exogenously that is towards the outside externally these are the chain of conidia and each of these conidia are uh, have the potential in order to uh, give rise to a whole new fun fungus that is the whole new mycelia or the new mature organism it can grow into each of the conidia has that potential in it so these are this was about conidiospores and they are born externally exogenously they are produced okay and these are being produced on what structures conidiophores conidio pores are the structures bearing conidia okay now sporangiospores are there the uh, sporangiospores are produced endogenously that is inside it is present in the inside it is the, the conidia were produced externally okay they were exposed to the outer surface but sporangiospores are produced internally within the structure known as sporangium okay this is the sporangium that is present on sporangiophore okay and it is bearing sporangium sporangium is bearing sporangiospores and each of these this spore has the potential to give rise to a new fungi or the new uh, mycelium or hyphae now these are the zoospores third type of asexual spores now zoospore can have can be uniflagellate also and they can be multiflagellate also okay in multiflagellate a, a one of the types is biflagellate kind of zoospores so such zoospores have two kinds of flagella this is the tensile type of flagella and this is the whiplash kind of flagella whiplash flagella is the smooth flagella and the tensile flagella is this hairy one the rough type of flagella okay so this is about zoospores this are this these are the third types of asexual spores and these are also these can also have the have the potential to give rise to a whole new fun fungal mycelia or the fungal organism now if we come to sexual reproduction sexual re spores are of three types oospores ascospores and basidiospores let's look at the sexual spores all right now in sexual reproduction one of these spore is ascospore ascospores are produced in sac like structures known as ascus singular is ascus and the plural is asci this is seen in the ascomycetes class of fungi so the fungi are divided into various classes we will study about these later on but for now just remember that ascospores are produced endogenously okay that is on the inside endogenous means that they are being produced on the inside of certain structures these structures in this case are called as ascus which are sac like structures all right so ascospores are produced inside sac like structures known as ascus okay and they are found in the fungi class ascomycetes coming to basidiospores basidiospores are born on club shaped structures which are known as basidia the singular is basidium so this looks like a club okay 
and on this structure are born basidiospores. Basidiospores are born exogenously, that is, they are born on the surface of this structure. In this case, ascospores were born inside this structure, inside the ascus, inside that sac like structure, whereas in the case of basidiospores, they are born on the surface of this club shaped structure. And this type of a uh, spore formation is the exogenous spore formation. The spores are being born exogenously and it is seen in which fungi class? Basidiomycetes. Okay, such kinds of spores are born in the, are seen in the fungi, fungal class Basidiomycetes. They are born exogenously. Now, the third kind of spores are oospores. Okay, now oospores are formed in structures the female reproductive structure is known as oogonium. Okay, inside this oospores are formed after they are being fertilized by the male gamete. Okay, so these are the oospores. Okay, this was about oospores and one more thing. Oospores are found in which fungal class? They are found in oomycetes. Okay. And they are also produced endogenously. They are they oospores are thick walled spores. Okay. Now we have completed all the reproductive types that is vegetative also, sex, asexual also, and sexual also. So asexual spores are formed by mitosis. Okay, they are also known as mitospores. Okay. And sexual spores, as always, are formed by meiosis and are known as meiospores. Okay, now let us study these cycles. In asexual reproduction, as already told, the fungal mycelium, single parent is involved, the mycelium undergoes meiosis in order to produce spores. And the spores are produced where? The spores are always produced in fruiting bodies, be it either sexual reproduction or asexual reproduction. Okay, be it sexual or asexual reproduction, spores will always be formed in fruiting bodies. These spores, when when they germinate, they are capable of giving rise to a new fungi. Okay, so this was about se asexual reproduction. Now let's talk about the various sexual stages. Okay, the sexual cycle in fungi comprises of three stages. First is plasmogamy, the second is karyogamy, and the third stage is meiosis. Okay, this these are the three stages that are seen in a sexual cycle in fungi. Okay, what happens in plasmogamy, which is the stage number one, fusion of cytoplasm occurs. So two two motile gametes or two non-motile gametes will come together and fuse with each other. Only the fusion of their cytoplasm will take. Okay, their nucleus will not fuse with each other. The, their cytoplasms will fuse with each other. Okay. Later on, their nuclei will fuse with each other. When their nuclei will fuse with each other, that step is known as karyogamy. But when their cytoplasm is only fusing, this step is known as plasmogamy. Okay. So, the... For example, these are the two cells that are going to fuse with each other. This is cell number 1 and this is cell number 2. When they will, when their cytoplasm will fuse together, they will together exist in a single cell like this. Okay. Then their nuclei will fuse. When their nuclei will fuse, they will form a diploid nucleus, okay, because both of these were haploid. When they fuse, they will form a diploid nucleus and this structure is known as a zygote. This zygote will then undergo meiosis, okay, in the spore producing structures which are known as fruiting bodies in order to produce spores. So the spores will again germinate in order to produce the new mycelium and in this way the sexual cycle continues. Okay. Now, this is the fungal mycelia. Okay. Now, fungi are haploid. Okay. They, their mycelia are haploid in condition. They are haploid and thyloid structures. They are not diploid. 
So, this is one fungal mycelia. When it will uh, fuse with another compatible mycelia, okay, for example, the another compatible mycelia has a, is, looks like this and comprises of a red nucleus. So, when these two mycelia will fuse with each other, that is plasmogamy is occurring, after plasmogamy this stage will form, okay, where two nuclei are present together but are not yet fused, that is karyogamy has not occurred yet, only plasmogamy has occurred. So, both of these nuclei would be temporarily present together in the same cell and such stage or such condition is known as a dicaryon, okay, dicaryon is present in which phase? This phase is known as diacaryophase. It is seen in some fungi. In some, in some fungi, the fusion directly occurs. Plasmogamy and karyogamy is happening together. But in some other fungi, this diacaryon is seen briefly. Okay? And this phase where the diacaryon occurs is known as the diacaryophase. So, after plasmogamy, diacaryon stage occurs. It is also known as the heterokaryotic stage because two different kinds of nuclei are present together but are not yet fused. Then karyogamy will occur. The nuclei will fuse in order to form a diploid zygote. Okay, the zygote will then undergo meiosis in order to produce spores. And after the production of spores, the spores are capable of giving rise to a new fungi mycelium once again. So, this is how reproduction in fungi, sexual reproduction in fungi is working. Now, classification of fungi. On the basis of morphology of the mycelium, okay, how the mycelium looks like, how is it uh, arranged, its mo the mode of spore formation and the fruiting bodies, this uh, fungi are divided into four classes. These are phycomycetes, ascomycetes, basidiomycetes and deuteromycetes. Now, in phycomycetes, ascomycetes and basidiomycetes, the sexual reproduction is present. Whereas, in deuteromycetes, only asexual or vegetative stages are seen and sexual reproduction is not known. Okay, it is not known. That is why it is known as fungi imperfecti. Alright? Ascomycetes is our sac fungi, which we just studied in the sexual reproduction of fungus. Okay, ascospores are being produced in ascomycetes, in sac-like structures known as asci or ascus, singular. In basidiomycetes, basidiospores are seen, okay, which, were, uh, which are again a type of sexual spores and basidiospores are produced on structures which look like a club, okay, which are known as basidiocarps. So, these are known as club fungi. Phycomycetes is further divided into oomycetes and zygomycetes. Okay. Now, phyco, th this, this, this group is of the lower fungi. That is, their mycelium is aseptate. Mycelium is present and it is aseptate. Xenocytic condition is seen. Multicellular condition in which various septa are present is not seen. In ascomycetes and basidiomycetes, multicellular condition is seen where septa are present. Okay? So, these are known as true fungi or true fungi are also known as eumycota. These are the lower fungi. These are the ascomycetes and basidiomycetes represent the true fungi in which, which are multicellular and in which that means septa are present in them. Okay. So, this was about the classification of fungi into various classes. In our next lecture, we will study each of these classes in further details. Now, coming to the neat previous year questions, please pay attention. This is very important. Now, question number one is from NEET 2021. So, which of the following statements is correct? Fusion of two cells is called karyogamy. This is statement number one. Is it correct? No, it is incorrect because fusion of two nuclei is known as karyogamy, not two cells. Statement B is saying fusion of protoplasms between two motile or non-motile gametes is called plasmogamy. So, this statement, yes, this statement is correct. We already studied the fusion of protoplasms between two motile gametes or two non-motile gametes is plasmogamy. We studied the cytoplasm, but there is just a minor difference between 
cytoplasm and protoplasm and these terms are can be used interchangeably but you should know that difference in protoplasm protoplasm comprises of cytoplasm plus nucleus okay whereas cytoplasm is, represents everything that is present inside the cell membrane excluding the nucleus but if we include the nucleus also the cytoplasm becomes protoplasm okay so fusion of protoplasms between two motiles or non motile gametes is called plasmogamy in plasmogamy the nucleus is not fusing only the cytoplasm of the two motile or non motile male gametes is fusing okay now statement 3 is saying organisms that depend on living plants are called saprophytes this statement is incorrect organisms that depend on dead plants if it if this was written that, then those organisms would be known as saprophytes and not only plants it could be animals also so this statement is incorrect statement d is saying some of the organisms can fix atmospheric nitrogen in specialized cells called sheath cells no this statement is incorrect because those cells are known as heterocysts okay well which can fix uh, which are the specialized cells ca that can fix atmospheric not, uh, nitrogen uh, that uh, the example was nostoc it was seen in nostoc okay heterocysts we just we studied in kingdom monera that heterocysts were present in nostoc now this uh, the correct answer is option number b now coming to the second question this is from neat 2019 we have to choose the correct answer from the options given below so option number column number 1 is saying saprophyte so saprophytes are uh, saprophytes are which organisms which uh, depend on the dead organic materials okay they decompose these dead organic materials and obtain nutrition from them so uh, p is matching with option number 2 here okay so both of these options can be chosen a and d are automatically incorrect parasite are what parasites are uh, depend on living plants or animals yes a, so q is matching with 3 here so, so statement b is incorrect uh, option b is incorrect the correct answer is option number c but let us see the others also lichens are the fungal association symbiotic associations of fungi with what with fung uh, with algae so symbiotic association of algae and fungi are lichens and mycorrhiza is the symbiotic association of fungi with plant roots so r is matching with 4 and s is matching with 1 so the correct answer is option number c so uh, this question is from me 2016 one of the major components of cell wall of most fungi is this is a direct question it is chitin okay not peptidoglycan not cellulose not hemicellulose cellulose is the major component of the cell wall of plants not fungi that is one of the major differences between fungi and plants all right so the next question is also from me 2016 which one of the following is wrong for fungi they are eukaryotic yes fungi are multicellular eukaryotic organisms only this statement is correct all fungi possess a purely cellulosic cell wall no fungi possess a chitinous cell wall not a purely cellulosic cell wall they are heterotrophic yes they do have heterotrophic mode of nutrition they are both unicellular yes yeast is unicellular fungus and they are multicellular also most of the fungi are multicellular only so these three statements are correct and this statement statement number b is wrong which gives us the correct answer also because we we have to choose which statement is wrong for fungi so the wrong statement is option number b so the correct answer is option number b so that is all for today's video students hope you enjoyed the video See you in the next video. Bye bye. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any feedback and suggestions or if you found something useful, do let me know in the comments below and like this video definitely share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video. Bye bye.